This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Hey, Open Alliance teams and fans, check out the new Open Alliance, FRC, FTC, and fun themed stickers and pins now available at firstupdatesnow.com slash stickers. We also have new Open Alliance and fun shirts arriving at firstupdatesnow.com slash shirts with free shipping, or head over to firstupdatesnow.com to find all the links. Welcome back onto the Open Alliance show, Spartatronics 3512. We had them on in week two, checking back here on week five, talking about their progress with their protobot, software updates, uh, elevator demo. And we're going to be talking about also writing for grants and awards. I think that's a great topic to, to cover. We're uh, many times very focused on the robot here in OA show, but love to hear about different uh, team aspects uh, and what they have to bring and hopefully some good advice four teams as well. Uh, so we have uh, Aiden, Ethan, and Haley. I'd love to have the three of you just introduce yourselves. Let us know what you do on the team again, and we'll hop right into some of your progress. Hi, I'm Aiden, and I'm the software lead for the team. Hi, I'm Ethan. I'm the electrical lead for the team. Hi, I'm Haley, and I'm the accounting lead for the team. Perfect. And, and, and Haley, did you say accounting or accounting lead? What was that? Uh, accounting. Accounting. Awesome. So I, I got to ask you on that first. Is that uh, just handling money for your, your team or do you go into like a full business aspect as well too? Uh, so I handle a couple different uh, aspects for our team. So I will help create our next uh, fiscal year budget once the off season rolls around for next year. Uh, but currently right now, uh, what I'm mostly doing is handling uh, some purchase for our team. So for apparel and stuff. And right now I'm also doing writing for grants. Awesome. And of course, we're going to talk about uh, writing about grants a little bit later as well. So excited to hear uh, more about how your team uh, handles that. And of course, like I said, advice for teams as well, too. Let's hop in uh, first into uh, some of your uh, progress uh, on your protobot as well. I know we got a robot right behind you, too. So we love to showcase all that. So tell us more about what's going on there first. Yeah, so it is now week five and uh, our protobot is pretty well built up at this point. Uh, let's move it forward, actually, real quick so we can show this lower down this tall boy because we decided to I make like a super cart. tall robot cart. The cart, the right. cart is oh. excellent as well. Like yeah. That probably really helps people's backs as you're uh, working in the pits. Yeah. So this is our protobot. Uh, it's changed a lot since week two, uh, especially from our initial designs. Uh, we got our slanted elevator on and uh, assembled. We also have our arm assembly on right now. And then we also have our, uh, we have a prototype bell, uh, belly pan on this right now. We've also got a proto electrical board uh, and our comp bot over here. Uh, if you want to move that closer, Aiden. Yes. This is our competition bot. And this is what we're going to be planning to use for competitions. So it's going to be the same setup as our proto bot. Uh, we make two robots every year to uh, basically make it possible for us to test out uh, every possible iteration that we want on this bot first. And then the ones that we want to finalize, we can put on this robot. So uh, the iterations that we made onto uh, this robot so far is uh, we just recently installed the intake and uh, this intake, or sorry, not the intake, the arm. Uh, the arm is uh, heavily inspired by uh, 2056's uh, tensioning, uh, strategy i it's basically you use a uh, grommet screw and what it does is that it essentially uses the chain and this little screw right here and it attentions this chain forward so it's nice and tight and everything's really snug so uh that's one of the things that we've been doing with this robot and we've been testing out the elevator quite a bit and it's been working out really well so this configurable elevator design that we had uh Nick create for us from week two has been working out really great so far. And we've been testing it through the uh, last few uh, days. So looking at from uh, your, your protobot onto your, your comp bot, you said a lot of it you'll, you'll implement on a protobot first and then it goes to your comp bot. Um, from, I, I got asked from the programmer's perspective, what do they get to work on uh, when they go through and does it make a difference between the two robots? Yes. So uh, on the protobot, uh, we get an elevator now, and then we also get this arm to mess with as well. Um, so usually in the past, 
it was kind of caught like pretty obvious which one was protobot and which one was comp there were some differences but luckily last year we started implementing like a better like more consistent manufacturing like program sure so i'm glad to say that our protobot and compots have been a little bit more like similar mechanical wise so um other than like motor constants and ids obviously you can't like control that or like you know sometimes it's hard to make it similar so um uh, it's just been great Greg, the last thing that we had on talked about how they made a, two identical robots with each other, right? And this one is a little bit different, I think, pro process that they're using. Is, is there, an, in your mind, is there an advantage to either one, or is it just kind of each team does what's best for them? I mean, I, you know, coming from coming from the ages where it was still bag and we would do practice bots, you know, the practice bot was never quite exactly the same as the real bot. Um, I think the main the main thing is it doesn't matter too much whether they're exactly the same or not because you can actually do your autonomous testing on your competition robot. So as long as the framework of everything is the same, like you said, changing little you know variables here and there are not that big of a deal. I, I was actually going to ask those that if you do make any big changes for the competition robot, will you go back and update the other robot um, also, or is just that robot just kind of the way it is? So we actually do take the chance to actually update everything. So since we use GitHub, what we just normally do is we like create another branch and just have it like proto or combat constants. And then we would like rebase that or like update it to like the latest commits. So that way both branches are like benefiting from like the same amount of changes. Got it. Let's keep moving yeah, on, I mean, on under I, robot I, progress. I love teams that, I mean, I think that even, I think a lot of teams were building two robots for a long time because of the bag, right. Or because of shipping the robots. But I still think there's a lot of validity in building two machines so you can do prototyping uh, both mechanically and programmatically um, while the other machine is getting finished or being driven or testing. So if, if you have the resources, I think that is a huge benefit to actually do this, the two robots still. Absolutely. So what's next uh, for you guys on your, on your team and your robot progress so far? So one of the last things that we have to do uh, with this protobot is we got to get the intake installed. We're also working with uh, a few ideas to move these cross members or back so we can actually uh, iterate a wider intake. Because one of our biggest limitations with this robot design right now is that the uh, supports are the limit to how uh, wide our intake can be right now. So right now our CAD team iterating it for a, a bit of a wider intake uh, for the future. Um, on your guys' thing, I, I know in the notes we have that, uh, it was looking at having an elevator demo. Is that like a live demo we get to see, or how does that how does that work for your yeah. robot? Sorry, you liked it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I really want to see it. We got our driver station up and everything so we can show this off. All right, let me know when you're enabling. All right. Enabling. All right. Practice safety. Yeah. Somewhere. So that's at it fully extended. Uh, we're using a cascade elevator system where we're using Dyneema. And then we also have an energy chain that's running our wires that come through the tubing right here. So Johnny, do you want to drop it back down? Yeah, so this elevator has been working out really well for us so far. Uh, it's heavily inspired by the Great T elevator, as we've said before, back in week two. Uh, the Elevator itself, we don't see very many changes to it uh, because it's worked so well so far. But uh, if there are any, are like any major changes, we're going to be adding like uh, guards here for the for the chain and the sprockets because we want to make sure that we're at the utmost of safety because it's really important that we don't uh, have anybody get their shoot uh, like their fingers caught in this thing yeah. or anything like that. So it's been working out really good for us so far, and software's uh, getting a lot of progress on it. So it's great so far. Yeah, so uh, the, the code to actually run this is really simple. All we're just doing is we're just telling the one of the Neos or the Spark Maxis to follow the other one, and then we're just applying the simple uh, joystick value to this. And then Johnny also helped make it like slow enough, so that's why it's pretty smooth when it goes up and down. No close of control. You guys use yeah. a, a term I wasn't as familiar with. You said, I think it was Dyneema. What is that? So Dyneema is kind of like this elastic uh, piece of string that's really, really strong and has a really good tensioning. So we actually use this blue cord on our uh, telescoping arms from 2022. And this stuff works really well. 
And what it's doing, it's on a ratchet system and it goes up and down to pull up the carriage. So this Dyneema is essentially just a really strong sort of string. I don't really have any other way to like- sure, Yeah. <laughs> it. Yeah. I, I just, I, I'm sure I've heard of it somewhere. I just, that's something that didn't ring a bell to me. So I'm glad you uh, explained that more. So I could, at least I can understand what that is uh, on there. Uh, I do want to make sure we give enough time for uh, Haley to talk about awards and grants. Is there anything else on your robot or robot progress uh, that you want to talk about before we wrap up from there? I think we're all good. We're doing good. Perfect. Uh, last thing I'll ask you then is uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, obviously things are getting together for stuff, but like what, what is kind of the immediate next steps for your team to accomplish with your robot? Uh, the immediate next steps for now is we want to get, we can actually start testing our cycles and get some driver testing in, but it also get our uh, software to get some time on this to figure out what we needs to be done. So that's pretty much the steps going forward. Yeah. So hey, software wise, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to just quickly add in for the software stuff, expand on a little bit. Um, we're just going to automate the elevator. And then uh, the arm has not moved yet. Um, so I'm working on that. We're going to have like tele up and, uh, Closed loop control, so that way, if something breaks on like the encoder, uh, the drivers have still some way of operating it, and we'll just be focused on that this week. Well, of course, best of luck on the robot wise. But let's uh, head over to Haley, who's going to talk more about uh, awards and grants and how your team is approaching that. And Haley, I'd love to hear, uh, of course, any advice that you have for uh, teams as well too uh, that you've seen this season. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be covering kind of the writing process we use for our more formal writing on the team. So it's kind of any writing that you would see for like award submissions or for grants. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of covering the process that I did when I was writing the business plan uh, for like uh, the team sustainability award. So what the general process is, is uh, planning, writing and review. So what that entails is we kind of plan to what to focus on. There's lots of different things that you can focus on with the team depending on what uh, you're writing for. So for certain companies, for instance, for grants, you might want to focus more on like the technology and manufacturing aspect of the team and STEM opportunities. But uh, for like the chairman's award, you want to focus on like the impact we make on the community. Sorry, impact. <laughs> but uh, after we plan what to focus on, we usually focus on like student leadership, uh, giving STEM opportunities in our area and other things. We move on to writing. Uh, we usually look at uh, past submissions for this and uh, consult other business students for this. Uh, after we finish with like an outline and uh, a good idea of what we're going to do, uh, we go over with review. So we usually go on over a ton of drafts uh, for this process and just change even like my new little details or like wording, just to make it sound uh, better together. For instance, I went over, uh, I think it was eight drafts entirely when I made the business plan before everything was finalized. What is the uh, binder that you have in front of you, if I can ask? Uh, this is actually uh, all our teams like past business plans and uh, some other forms that we have. So this is uh, our together so I can show you uh, different things a bit. So on like the first page, we have different uh, aspects such as like our team mission statement, a bit about us or like our history and other things. And then the rest of this uh, kind of addresses like our growth, uh, what we kind of struggled with in the past uh, few years. So uh, we focus on kind of marketing and, and our team goals. So for the business plan, uh, we outline different ways we do fundraisers, our budgeting and grants. We also focus on the way we maintain our sponsor relationships. So when, when you're uh, developing this as a, as a team, you know, I, I assume a lot of this happens pre-season, pre-build season. Um, mm -hmm. Does your team, you know, go back and readjust based on the students that are on the team each year, you know, what your goals for the year are, or like what do those conversations um, look like? Yeah, we kind of uh, just uh, based a lot on with students, kind of what's going on through the season and stuff. Uh, we have a lot of team discussions on what we're planning and stuff. For instance, I we had a very long discussion on like what type of intake we want and stuff. It was, I believe, like two hour two hours going over the different pros and cons for the intake, and then we had another discussion about which archetype we want to choose for the uh, robot. 
Well, Spartatronics, we really appreciate you taking the time to tell us about your uh, robot and operations side of the team as well, too. It's great to hear uh, how your business plans come together. Uh, always love to hear that's what I did a lot uh, when I was on a first team is I handled a lot of the, the marketing side and business side of things as well, too, when I was a student. So super cool to hear that. Haley, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. And, of course, you guys got an event coming up uh, week two, so not a whole lot of time for your team to get things uh, ready. So we'll let you get back to work, but really appreciate it, and uh, good luck at your first event. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. FRC Premier Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premier 23. Premier Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premier 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.